Yeah, it's. Uh, I think this could be a lucky ground for me. Um, I've got a couple of hundreds here, and I really enjoy playing here. Yeah? The wicket's always really good. Uh, the Cobras always have a, a good team out. They put up a good fight. Um, I just really enjoy playing here. Yeah? Cool. I think that the, probably the only thing I remember is Dane Pitt not getting me out for a change. <laughs> No, uh, he's, he's got me out quite a couple of times now. Um, I actually, I'm pretty happy to, to have played him all right this time around. Uh, the way I played the spinner was pretty nice. Um, and just my balance, usually I work quite hard on my balance and the balance was quite good. Best cricketing lesson I've learned. Um, that's a tough one. I've learned so many over the years. It's been hard lessons and bitter pulls to swallow. Um, I think you've got to value your wicket. Batsmen get themselves out quite a bit. Uh, if you can limit that, play your game, but limit the mistakes you make to get a soft wicket away, that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned is to really put a high value on your wicket and not give it away easily. I think that's the, the most important thing for me. I mean, I played with guys who were a lot better cricketers than mm -hmm. I was, and they've stopped playing now. Because you go through that dip and you have a, a bad season or a bad patch and stuff like that, and you've just got to keep going and, and believe that what you are doing is the right thing and if you get out of it it's, you're so much better player and the one thing I have learned is to stick it out and know that the process I'm doing is the right process and I will eventually get out of it and have success again. Mm. Once you get to this level your game has to be sorted out. You, you can't come in here and expect a coach to sort your game out and, and teach you how to bat. You've got to figure that out in club cricket, then yeah. academy cricket, and then semi-professional cricket. Uh, it's vital that you score the runs there and, and put your head down, really work hard, learn how to score runs, learn how to win games at that level before you come into this level. So when you are picked here, when it's a full professional environment, you play against pro tier players, you need to know what you're going to do and when you want to do it, and then back yourself to execute what you want to do. You I think international cricket, you've got to be able to hit good balls for four. There's no getting away in you know, international cricket. Maybe at franchise cricket you have, maybe a bowler that comes from a semi-pro team if you've had an injury somewhere and you feel like you can get on top of him. I think, I haven't played international cricket, but there's no getting away from it. You've got four or five bowlers that come at you all the time and you really have to be on your game and those guys are on a different level. And uh, probably get a good night's sleep before the game. Uh, probably won't, won't sleep at all. Probably cry a little bit as well. Uh, no, I think for me to to get to the next level, I just have to be consistent at this level. Um, I think I've got a good opportunity this year to play a couple of games and, and to see what I can do. Um, I think the guys in the pro tier team are pretty much set. They, they know their positions, they know their roles. And I really have to play very well to, to take one of their spots. But you never know what's going to happen. I mean, an injury might happen. I, it will be unfortunate, but and a couple of injuries, and then you never know. You have a good season, you get a call. Um, we've got a pretty young team um, that we've signed up this year. Pre-season went really well. The guys trained really hard. Everyone's games are looking really good. So, yeah, just excited for the season. We haven't set clear goals for what we want to achieve in the season, but more a way we want to play and what we want to do and how we want to be seen in the public. This, this winter, I worked pretty hard on um, imposing myself a little bit more on, on the game. Um, trusting myself to, to play the ball when it's in the area to score. Um, rather than in the past, I was probably fighting for a spot in the team all the time. So a little bit fear of failure came in where this year it's a little bit different. Um, I can just play my game. And the youngsters, we've got some serious youngsters in our team this year. Um, we've lost a couple of players um, uh, to the Titans, obviously Tienes and Davies gone back to Dolphins. Uh, my chance, uh, obviously a gold black player, so he's on pay for play with us now. So that's opened the door for a couple of serious youngsters. We've got, yeah. uh, we call them the, the murder squad or the, the ball busters. Uh, they hit the ball pretty hard and they ball pretty quickly. So yeah, we've got Corne Dry. Uh, he's played a couple of SAA games in the past. Um, he had a really good season with the amateur team. Looked really good in pre-season. And then uh, Andres Goos has had a very good couple of years now. Africa Cup, done really well. Um, Amateur team played really good cricket. Very exciting guy. Hits the ball really clean. Obviously got picked up in the Global League last year as well. So he's a prospect. And then uh, Patrick Kruger, the original ball boss that he <laughs> he likes to eat the leather off the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think um, if the Global League can happen, well, the new 2020 can happen this year. It's obviously a great opportunity for the guys to play a bit of 2020 cricket, to get a bit of exposure, maybe have some overseas that you play with. You yeah. learn new skills. You learn the different way they play it overseas. It's vital for us 
and for our country and for our development of the youngsters to have this tournament and to make it happen. I really hope it happens this year. It sounds like it is going to go ahead, so really happy with that. About it too. Uh, 2020, the whole hype and the build-up and the excitement and the pace of it, the, you know, the, the game changes so quickly. I mean, you, you could be out of it and the team could have 70 after six overs and somehow they you restrict it they have a couple of guys caught in the boundary a couple of guys miss straight ones and you have one and then you're back in the game mm. so it just changes all the time and everyone's in the game all the time there's no hiding everyone's part of it all the time so uh -huh. it's really a good game to play mm -hmm. the challenge i find um i think as a middle order batsman you come in uh, you hit a good shot you get one so sometimes uh, in the middle it's quite difficult you get in over 8 to 15 and you know you have to get on with it but you hit good shots and you sometimes get one run mm. or and then the pressure starts building 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 you're looking for that boundary but that guys know they have their boundary fielders out and they're looking to restrict you they're not going to give you a boundary ball so you yeah. kind of got to make it happen but then you know there's a couple of overs still left in the banks you don't want to give it away quickly. Yeah, do. yeah the sticker is uh, so just the awareness sticker for cystic fibrosis um, it's the foundation is in Johannesburg so yeah, I'm just trying to create a bit of awareness for cystic fibrosis. Uh, it's people that struggle with a, a really tough illness and, uh, and they could definitely use some, some exposure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cystic fibrosis is a, it's a chronic uh, illness that you inherit from your parents. Um, it affects your lungs and your intestines and your pancreas. So the mucus you have in your lungs and in your intestines, the mucus is too thick because of the protein molecule that doesn't transport the salt. Um, so it stops when you get ill, when you get bacteria, it, the mucus thicks up, thicks up really quickly. So the bacteria becomes a quick infection. You struggle to um, absorb vitamins, proteins, minerals in your digestive system. So people really struggle to breathe. Uh, lifespan is a little bit shorter. Uh, treatment, well, 37 years. Treatment is very tough, very uh, expensive, and, and these people definitely need need a cure, and they need people to. To help as, a, as a kid I played everything I did. I remember at one stage I did seven sports um, when I was in primary school. Um, loved everything. Um, hockey was obviously another love of mine. Um, I was a really good hockey player. Um, probably better than cricket, but cricket financially probably um, helped out a little bit more. I got a bursary to go to University of Pretoria and then I got a bursary to do my honours in, in Port Elizabeth. Uh, so yeah, I mean cricket's definitely my passion and um, yeah.